Hello and welcome to Briefly Everything. We're going to briefly discuss 750 BCE all the way to 700 BCE today. Together we'll traverse those years, during which we will discuss the Italians, the Greeks, the Bible, the Assyrians, and many, many more as well. Let's get started. 750 BCE. In a few decades, we'll uh, let Rome onto the world map and discuss it a lot more. But for now, Rome is not really known as anything. However, its neighbouring Etruscans were a lot more known in the early history books. And by this time, in 750 BCE, the Etruscans established Italy's first civilization in the region between Arno here and the Tiber. This whole place here obviously wasn't called Italy just yet, but its area is now slowly making its presence onto the world map. Sometime during 750 BC, it's hard to find sources on this, and it could even stretch as far back as 1400 BC. So the math here might be wrong by a few 700 years, give or take. Sorry, it's not me, it's my research. And just quickly on that note, I spend a lot of time researching everything here. I'll give you ample resources and links to everything that I have made my findings through, just so you know. So you can go and check it on your own before you criticize me. Because there's a lot of that and it makes me feel bad. Okay, now let's move on. Delphi becomes known to the world by this time. With its ancient religious sanctuary dedicated to the Greek god Apollo, this is where you could find the Oracle of Delphi, if you've heard of it which everyone in Greece made pilgrimages to for prophecies. The person people came to see was actually a priestess called Pythia, who drank a weird kind of cocktail with methane and other things and would then channel the gods and dish out their advice. Over the entrance to the temple at Delphi was a famous inscription, Know thyself. It reminded visitors that man must never believe himself to be more than just mortal, mind you that, and that no one can escape his or all her, uh, to be PC here, destiny. Sort out how I feel after I eat Mexican food. This was a theme all throughout Greek philosophy, not the Mexican part though. In 393 CE, so that's actually more than a thousand years later, the Roman Emperor Theodosius banned practices of ancient religions and sadly sacked the temple in Delphi. So that would be the end of methane cocktails. Oi, 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 how sad. I guess they just had to revert to uh, margaritas and gin tonic instead. Now moving five years down the timeline to 745 BC. If you followed our videos from the start, you will have heard about the Assyrians as far back as 2600 BC. That's about 5000 years ago. They've always been around in history and they still are to this very day, making them almost unique. But during this year in history, 745 BC, Tiglath Pilser III becomes arguably the most awesome king in Assyrian history, at least according to me. He grew the Neo-Assyrian Empire and divided it into 80 provinces, each governed by a eunuch, only loyal to him. In ancient times, surrounding yourself by eunuchs was a common theme. It was believed that if they could not bear their own children and form their own family, they would only be loyal to their king. This concept actually worked really well for the Assyrians at least. So you'll notice how they employ a lot of eunuchs throughout history. Tiglath Pilser had grand goals and realized they needed a larger army to achieve them, so he let anyone within the Assyrian Empire join. He even paid them too. So, once his army was mobilized, this was actually the first professional national standing army in history. And need I state, it was fierce indeed. One of the reasons we know so is because there are many biblical accounts of the Assyrians, as they would often have skirmishes with the Israelites, making sure they'd be getting great press in the Bible. Many people will associate the Assyrians with their brutal warrior culture, be that true or not. 15 years down the line, talking a little bit about the Bible here, by this time in 730 BC, Jacob, yes, the one from the Bible, he had 12 grandsons, guess he didn't care much for condoms, who each established and ruled a tribe in current-day Israel. It was actually 10 grandsons in the north and then two in the south, which will actually become much more important later on in this video. The 10 grandsons in the north would constitute the kingdom of Israel, and the two in the south, run by Judah and Benjamin, will, uh, well, we'll get them back to these people as the Assyrians will unleash their might upon them in just eight years from now. 
the Assyrians, as you will notice in a bit, will be a bit all over in this video. They'll be everywhere and anywhere. Needless to say, the Assyrians were indeed very dreaded at this time in history. And on that note, I'm happy to declare that we've made it halfway through this video. Well done, pat yourself on the shoulder, etc, etc. And during this intermission here, well, there's not time to go to the bathroom just yet, because I'd like to take a little off-course track here and tell you some fascinating facts that you might not have heard about the Bible. First of all, did you know that there are actually 31,173 verses in total in the Bible, depending on the translation, of course. And it's actually been translated into most languages that we speak on this earth. 1,548, to be exact. Learning the Bible is actually an awesome idea as well if you just want to go to karaoke a lot because there's actually a total of 185 songs all throughout the Bible. Did you also know that the Bible actually never mentions that there were three wise men who went to see baby Jesus? There could actually be way more than just three. Scriptures actually never tells us how many went, only that three gifts were given. And lastly, ironically, we'll talk about the last word here in the Bible, which is Amen. In the book of Revelation, Amen actually means so be it. It's like the ultimate mic drop. And with that historical mic drop, I feel like we can come back to our course and resume our history lesson. Let's make a quick detour here to Africa. If you remember, in our previous videos, we've talked about Nubia vaguely, which is a region just south of Egypt along the Nile in current day Sudan. As Egypt had fallen into decline during this time, the Nubians in the south saw their opportunity to be the top dog in Africa. So roughly 730 BC, the Nubian king Pai successfully invaded and conquered Egypt, extending his control to the whole Nile Valley. Egypt, as you probably know, and as you definitely know if you've seen my previous videos, was one of the first ancient civilizations, and it was feared for thousands of years, but roughly around 1000 BC, specifically as of 1178 BC, they would take a backseat in history making. And this is just another reminder of that, now that they've lost their entire empire to the Nubians, and they're just puppets basically. Around this time, in the 7th century BCE, we start to hear of the Median language, spoken by people in present-day Iran, by people called the Medes. Until this point, they were not one people, but just scattered about tribes. The little we know about the Medes is written by its enemy, and it seems they were attacked by some concerned Assyrians and their aforementioned, first in history, professional national standing army. In order to withstand the attack from the Assyrians, all the Median tribes united under one king, Diocese, in 728 BCE. This is big for many reasons, but mainly because now, for the first time in the history books, all the tribes living across current-day Iran were united as one people, the Medes. So though they weren't called Iranians, nor their country Iran, but from this point in history, Iran will more or less be a consistent place and people. And soon enough, we'll start hearing of the Persians, who also originated in Iran, hence why their language today is called Persian. Obviously, they got a few others as well. Now, moving down to 722 BC, and let's go to these Assyrians and have a visit there. Actually, the Neo-Assyrians by this point. They kept getting stronger and bigger, so now the Kingdom of Israel was actually overrun by these Assyrians. Or actually, just the northern part of the kingdom, which I mentioned earlier. They didn't manage to take Jerusalem, however, thanks to Lord's intervention as so finely quoted in the Bible. However, they did manage to overwhelm the north of Israel, which was at the time divided into 10 tribes, as previously mentioned, and the Assyrians wiped clean off the 10 of the 12 tribes in Israel from history, the majority of which were probably dispersed and sold into slavery. However, some accounts of history also refers to this as yet another captivity for the Jews. Ah, oh, not another one, poor, poor Jews. The Old Testament talks about how the Jews were put in captivity by the Egyptians around a thousand years ago in 1650 BCE. So this now will then be their second captivity already, also referred to as the less famous Assyrian captivity. And then there's actually another one coming in about 200 years called the Babylonian captivity. And not to even mention the war, the World War II that is. Well, I think we can all agree that the Jews have had it a bit rough. Now, I would just like to briefly mention one more thing in history here. 
in briefly everything. Between this year and 700 BCE, the Jews, with their two remaining tribes in the south, one run by Judah and one by Benjamin, would now form the Kingdom of Judah, in which you can find Jerusalem, which will make this the birthplace of Judaism, Christianity and Islam very soon. Lovely indeed. And on that note, we've traversed 50 years in history closer to current day. We've discussed the Etruscans, alternatively called the first Italians, <laughs> the awesome and dreaded Assyrians. The Bible actually got plenty of our attention this time. The Medians, or the so-to-be Iranians, and the poor, poor Jews. And that's it for me this time and for you too on YouTube. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed listening as I always do talking to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below and rest assured that I triple check all my research before I let anything out into a video. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening or night. Amen.